intention of painter's arms is effectively to start to create a better hierarchy of movement when you use your body. So once we've connected the hips and we're, we're learning how that just a small movement from the hips can then affect the whole body and we start to then become aware of how the spine moves when we breathe and how it waves and all those really wonderful little details in the ways that we can move it. We then learn to connect the shoulders so then we can use the hips and the spine and the shoulders, the arms, the wrists, all the way to the hands, all together. Now this is a very, very powerful milestone in your practice because you'll learn to transmit force from the ground all the way to your fingertips. It has a lot of martial applications or also just really general well-being in the way you move because the body starts to work as one piece rather than you overdoing any one area. Now, it's very common with the shoulders that we, when lifting them we can, we can elevate them and we're, we're overusing this area and we're also disconnecting it from the back. What we're going to learn with painter's arms is how do we lift while the shoulders are relaxed. And when you go into this, a lot of people realize that they can't even actually get past here. They haven't really used the scapula to lift their arms. So with painter's arms, you're going to really start to learn how to use the shoulders in reference to the rest of the body. So to start off, you'd like to be in a, a sort of narrow horse stance. If you, if you need a gauge, about one, two, three steps is more than enough. You can go a little narrower and that's sort of the, the range that we're working with. And a good, a good marker is you drop down and your knee should be able to touch the foot and you can maybe go a little bit wider if you're more advanced. So from there, all we'd like to look at is first just sinking the arms down like you do in dinosaur arms. We're looking to create relaxation so the shoulder can sit down. We're not holding them up with the upper trap. We want to make sure that when we do this that the shoulder blades aren't flaring out and tilting forward. They need to start to sink down and I'll talk more about that as we go. So relax that down. Relax. If you need to shake and just let it all go, you can. So inhale, feel the breath move up the spine and then we start to lift. So we lift through the shoulders, expand the elbows, expand the wrists and then exhale, release through the shoulders, release through the elbows, release through the wrists. Inhale, so notice I'm going to perform a wavy action, so inhale all the vertebra start to stack up. We then lift up. Imagine we're lifting in the underarms, but the shoulders don't elevate. They stay sunk. When you're doing this correctly, you should or you might be getting a stretch through your middle back in between the shoulder blades because we're opening up that tissue that might not have been moved for quite some time. Inhale, expand, exhale, release. Notice how I'm sinking down through my whole body. Inhale, gently press the feet into the ground, the lower body expands, then the spine. And just go up as high as you can. So these arms stay bent, we don't want to lock. You lock, you block. There's a good saying for you. So I'm not pushing out, I'm just letting it sink down. And lifting up just as far as you can. We only really need to get the humerus this part of the arm to about a 45 degree angle opposite the ground. We don't need to start to go beyond because we lose the, the strength curve basically. When we, we go up, the shoulder then starts to balance, we lose the effect. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Slow it down. Don't think the movement, feel the movement. So that's the first stage. Then we add in the circular fashion that you'll often see in Tai Chi and creates a bit of an illusion where we think that the arms are moving like this, but they're not actually moving. The body is moving. The arms are just doing the same thing that we did before. 
So I'll show you from the side and then I'll show you from the front. So we sink down, inhale. So we move from the hips all of this action that you'll be doing in the swings. Expand as you inhale. Feel the breath come up the spine, shoulders, elbows, wrists, hands. Circle around, exhale. Release down through the foot that you're moving down towards. Inhale. All of the weight, most of the weight is down in this foot. So I'm gently pressing up. That force is coming up and out of the hands. And I'm turning it. And we do three. And it's just like you're painting. And we'll come back the other way and I'll show you from the front. Keep your peripherals wide and just gently focus on your hands. But we're not too intently, intensely focusing on the hands. Inhale. Arms, shoulders, hips, spine, all move together. And then we come back to the middle. Notice how the body, if I were to speed this up, is creating like a giant whip. And we're just doing it nice and slow. So let's put it all together. We start at the front. Three up, three down. To the left or the right, doesn't matter which side you start first. Soften down through the whole body. Feel the small movements of your hips then affect your spine, which affects your shoulders. Should feel like you're moving in water. Then back the other way. Feel the shoulder blades working without lifting up through the shoulders. Feel the stretch in the middle back. Don't let the elbows flare out. It's a sign of compensation. Keep them in line with the shoulders. So enjoy the power of painter's arms to really start to connect your whole body to move as one unified structure.